Thank you for listening to this special message from Pastor Kathy in Choose Life Kids. For more information about Choose Life Church, Choose Life Kids, and Dean Shropshire Ministries, go to ChooseLifeHobbs.com. Now prepare your heart for the Word. Uh, so as we continue our lesson on faithfulness, I want you to find the scripture again in your Bible. Go ahead and find it. By the end of the month, you will be an expert in finding Luke 6.10. So 16.10, rather. I want you to go ahead and find it in your Bible. If it's your own Bible, you probably need to mark it. You know, that's what I do with many of the verses that are so important. I get a highlighter and I highlight them. So let's everybody find Luke 16.10 as I begin to explain it to you because I want you to understand what faithfulness is. It's so important that you be faithful. God was faithful. Jesus was faithful. The disciples were faithful. We need to be faithful. And that's why our, our main point is, I will be faithful in all I do. I will be faithful in all I do. You might write that at the top of your paper and say this over and over and over and over. Even before you go out in your day, I will be faithful. What does that mean? We're going to talk about that. But you want to be faithful to God in all that you do. Has everybody found it? Okay, raise your hand if you need help. <coughs> I want everybody to put their eyes on it. It's on page, let's see, don't we have the page number? 514 for the Luke 1610. It's on page 514. Let's practice finding our pages and learning our page numbers. So this is what it says. He who is faithful in what is least is also faithful in much. And he who is unjust or unfaithful, that's what unjust means. See, they're opposites. You're either faithful or you're unjust. You're either faithful or you're unfaithful. Do you understand? Whenever you put you in in front of a word, that means you're not that, okay? So when you're faithful in a little bit, when you're faithful in a little bit, you're going to be faithful in a lot. If you're not faithful in a little bit, you won't be faithful in a lot. That basically is what it means. See, unjust means, or unfaithful, is doing your own thing. It's doing your own thing. What does faithful mean? Let's put up the definition of faithful. Faithful means doing what you are asked to do the way that you were asked to do it. See, it doesn't stop there with doing what you were asked to do. See, because you may be told by your parents to go clean your room. And you might think, oh, I'm faithful. I did it. Or I'm obedient. No, because the second part of the verse says, you do it the way that you were asked to do it. In other words, if you go in there and you stuff everything that's on the floor under the bed and cram it in the closet, but your parents have taught you how to put it away where there's a spot for everything, and you don't do it the way that they told you to do it, then you are not faithful. Do you understand? Does that make sense? Faithful is doing what you're asked to do in the way that you were asked to do it. And see, it also means letting your actions match your words. In other words, when your mom says, honey, go clean your room, then you say, yes, ma'am, I'm going to go clean my room. And if you go in there and sit there and play on your video games, are you cleaning your room? Are your actions matching your words? No. Turn to your neighbor and say, let your actions match your words. Turn to your other neighbor and say the same thing. Let your actions match your words. See, look at this. Your actions must match your words. So think about it this way. So many people say they're Christian, and what does Christian mean? Christian means what? What? What does it mean to be a Christian? You believe in God? Did you have something else? You're saved? That's right. That you read your Bible and, and what else? Yeah, you're obedient. 
So, because obedience brings what? So if you go around telling everybody, which is fine, you want to be the salt and you want to be the light in your school, you want to let people know that, yeah, you go to church on Wednesday night, you're not going to go to the carnival. You go to church on Wednesday night. You put God's things first, you see. You're not going to go to your soccer game on Sunday because you put God's, God's word first, unless it's after, after church, you see. When you say you're a Christian, then you do what Christians do. Your actions match your words. Do you understand that? So that's why we come to church, so we can find out, once I'm a Christian, what are my actions supposed to be, right? And this is the book that tells you what your actions are supposed to be. So see, it's important that you understand that your actions match your words. Your actions match your words. See, when you understand that that God has given you many, many things, he has given you many things, many instructions, and when you do what he says you're supposed to do, then he's going to give you more. See, if you're faithful over little, another scripture says, if you're faithful to do the little things, He's going to make you ruler over much. He's going to bless you. But it starts where? With the little things, right? Starts with the little things. Being faithful to do what you're told. To watch your brother and sister. To clean your room. To do whatever little things that you might think is insignificant you want to blow off. But when you do them, God sees them. And you're going to be blessed. You are going to be blessed. So we want always our actions to match our words. Now, as we said last time, the most important person that you need to be faithful to is who? God. We need to be faithful to God. That's exactly right. And that's why we come to church, find out what he asks us to do, and then go ahead and do it. James 1.22, James 1.22 says, be doers of the word not just hearers only. See, a lot of people come to church and they hear the word, but they don't do it. They know what they're supposed to do. Well, I should pray. I should read my Bible. I should pray in the Holy Ghost, but I don't want to. I don't want to. See, they say they're a Christian, but they're not producing the fruit, they're not doing the things that a Christian is supposed to do. Their actions are not matching their words. And we don't want to be those kind of people because God says, when he says it, he's going to do it, right? Right? Yeah. When he says something, he's going to do it, and he expects us to do the same way. When we say, I'm going to go clean my room, Mom, or I'm going to help you with the dishes. He expects you to do it the way you were told to do it. Obedience brings blessings. See, you boys might have to um, take out the trash because that's usually the mom's job, or the dad's job, rather, not the mom. The mom now, you know, maybe gave you that, that job to do, so you can take out the trash. And if she tells you to take out the trash and to tie it up and then put it in the big trash outside and then bring it back in and put the bag back in it. See, there's a process, right? You can't just take the trash out and not put the new bag in because what's going to happen? People are going to come put the trash in and mess up the trash can because it doesn't have a bag in it, right? Excuse me. So when you're asked to do something, Being faithful in it is doing it the way you were asked to do it. Okay? So, you have to choose to obey. You can do it halfway, or you can choose to do it correctly. What's your choice? Remember, we talked about the parable of the talents, and who remembers how many were given to the first servant by the master? How many? Five. How many the second master? Two. Two. Okay. And then how many the third servant, rather? One. Okay. So the master gave one five, one two, and one one. Right? Talents. 
He gave him these talents. Then he went on a trip, the master did. Then he came back. And the one with five had done what? Multiplied it. Multiplied it. So five came to ten, right? The one that had two, what did he do? He multiplied it. And so how many did he have? Four. But the one with one, he didn't do anything with him. He buried it in the sand because he said, I thought you were a hard, harsh taskmaster and you, you wouldn't want me to do anything with it. So this is what the master said. He wasn't a harsh taskmaster, was he? No. He said in Matthew 25, 26, and this is very important, listen, the one that had one, see the one that had five and the one that had two, he said, you are faithful. You are faithful. In other words, what you did with your five and your two pleased me. And see, this is representative of God. God is the master. He wants us to use our talents, whether we have five or two. He wants to, us to use our talents for him. Do you understand? But the one who had one, this is what he said. You wicked and lazy servant, you knew that I have reaped where I have not sown and gathered where I have not scattered. So he called him lazy and wicked. Say lazy and wicked. Lazy and Say I don't want to be lazy and wicked. Because lazy and wicked equals unfaithful. Right? The one with five, the one with two, they were faithful. They used their talents for the Lord. They used what they had been given for God. The one said no. Remember we talked about this all last month. What have you been given? What have you been given? Talents. Well, you've been given talents, and that is the living water, right? Didn't we talk about that all last month? You've been given living water. You've been given the power of God. Okay? And remember we talked about the fact that you can just do nothing with it. Like if somebody falls down or if the teacher is depressed or whatever, it's all about me. I don't care. I'm not going to go give her a kind word. I'm not going to allow this living water to flow out of me. I'm not going to go lay hands on that sick person or that sick grandma. I don't care if they die. I don't care. See, that's a stinking attitude. That's an unfaithful attitude because God has given you the life of God on the inside of you, and you're not doing anything with it. So what are you called, called by the master? You're so wicked. It's Lazy and wicked and disobedient and unfaithful. Do you want to be called that? No. no. None of us want to be called that. None of us want to be called lazy and wicked. Now, wicked means twisted. Say twisted. twisted. And it comes from the word wick, which is, this is a wick in the candle. Do you see it? I burn it so you can kind of see that it's black so you can see it. So a wick is, is taking, um, taking um, string and twisting it around and sticking it in the candle so when it burns, it goes down. Do you understand? Otherwise, you know, the candle wouldn't burn if you didn't have the wick. Isn't that right? So I'm going to give you something that parallels what a wicked, what a wick is. It's twisted. So we're going to go ahead and pass out the, the candy. I'm going to pass you out a candy cane. And so you're not going to open it yet. You're just going to hold it and look at it. So once everybody gets one, I want you to look at it. I just want you to look at it. You can eat it later, but not now. So remember what unfaithful is. Wicked and lazy, right? Wicked and lazy. Say wicked and lazy. Wicked and lazy. So 
This is wicked means twisted. So you can see that in a candy cane you have white and red colors, right? And they are twisted, twisted together to make a candy cane. If they just mix the color together, you're not eating it yet. If they mix the color together, it would be a kind of a light red, right? White and red, light red. And so it would be solid, right? It would be solid. But this isn't. It's one color and then another color, twisted, right? It's twisted around. Now, I want you to look at this and think about your life. See, we are supposed to be solid as Christians. We're supposed to be solid. But look at this candy cane as if the white is good things you do and the red is bad things you do. Do you understand? And it's all twisted. What does this represent? Your life. Good, bad, good, bad, good, bad, good, bad, right? Do we want that kind of life? No. We want a solid life. We want a solid life. We want our life to be solid, not filled with good, bad, faithful, unfaithful, faithful, unfaithful. Do you understand? The candy cane would be considered, in our illustration, unfaithful, right? The candy cane would be considered unfaithful. So we don't want to be a twisted Christian. We don't want to be a twisted Christian. We want to be solid, a solid Christian. We don't want to be the type of people that the teacher thinks, one day you're a Christian, but the next day you just cussed at the kid on the playground. You see? Or you, you put your foot out and made them fall. Do you see? Do you understand? So we don't want to be twisted. Say, I don't want to be twisted. Yeah, you don't want to be twisted. So twisted, when the red in here represents sin, right? Right? Sin. Sin. Righteousness, sin, righteousness, sin, righteousness. Now, even though it's a pretty candy cane, we don't want to be this way, right? We don't want to be this way. We want to be solid. We want to be solid white, right? We want to be solid white Christians that one day we're a Christian and we're acting like it, and the next day we're a Christian and we're acting like it. Does that make sense, Noah? No, it doesn't make sense? Like, we don't want to be one day good, one day bad. We want to be consistent. We don't want to compromise. One day good, and the next day our friends say, come on, we want to go steal some candy at the grocery store. And you say, okay, and you go with them. What is that? Being disobedient, it's sin, it's being unfaithful, right? Do you understand? We don't want to be a seesaw Christian or a teeter-totter. Isn't that what goes up and down? Right. Right. You know, yeah, who, you know who wants to make you sin? The devil. Because he comes to steal, kill, and destroy. We want to be a solid Christian. We want to be a solid Christian. How do you be a solid Christian? Well, you're doing it right now, Right? What are you doing? What are you doing right now? You're, you're coming to church, right? You're coming to church. You're praising. You're praying. Not in church, but we do pray. But you need to do this every day at your house. You need to pray. You need to pray in the Holy Ghost. See, boys and girls, you can't compromise. You can't say, oh, it's okay to sin. Oh, it's okay to lie. It's okay to cheat. It's okay to steal. No. You want to be a candy cane Christian? No. You want to be a solid Christian. You don't want to be wicked, all twisted. See, you don't want to be twisted. You want to be solid, solid, a solid Christian. That's what you want to be. Well, what's the definition of lazy? You know the definition of lazy? You know what it means? It means, look at me. 
When you're lazy, your flesh is in control. Doesn't that make sense? <clears throat> like you're laying in bed, mom says, get up. And, no. and you don't. That's right, August. You don't. You just lay there. What is that? Lazy. 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 Your flesh says, I just want to stay in bed. I just want to stay in bed. I don't want to get up. I don't want to go to school. I don't want to go to church. I just want to lay in bed. That's lazy. That's letting your flesh control you. What about this? What about eating chocolate all day? Because you really, 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 really love chocolate. What is that? Well, it's lazy, right? It's doing what your flesh wants, even though you know in your heart, I shouldn't do that. I shouldn't do that. Right? You shouldn't do that. What other ways do you let your flesh control you? When you get home from school, I don't want to do my homework. I don't want to do my homework. Isn't that letting your flesh control you? Because you know that you're supposed to do your homework. But I don't want to. That's letting your flesh control you, which is lazy, which is unfaithful. I want you to, boys and girls, every time you see a candy cane, you think of the red in here. And you think of the fact that, that red represents letting your flesh control you. The red represents being wicked, no, twisted. No, That's exactly right. But when you, you make a decision to let your flesh control you, then the red is there, because that is sin. We're supposed to be led by who? Jesus. The Holy Spirit, yes, Jesus, God, the Holy Spirit, the Word of God. And see, that's where you have to say, mm -mm. I like candy canes, but I'm not gonna be one. I'm not gonna be all twisted. One day good, one day bad, one day faithful, one day unfaithful, or even moment by moment. One day lazy, one day not lazy. You see, we don't want to be wicked. We don't want to be twisted. What's the first thing you think of when you think of wicked? Well, no, but you think of the wicked witch, right, in Snow White? Right? Wasn't there another wicked witch in The Little Mermaid? Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, there, there's all, all over movies and shows showing a wicked witch. That's a good representation. But a candy cane is also twisted. So I want you to think about, I don't want to be, I don't want to be twisted. <laughs> Say, I don't want to be twisted. Okay, see when you do, when you put things off or do it your own way, then you're being led by the flesh, right? Okay, so did you see those dirty looks that they were giving him? The Pharisees and the Sadducees? You know, in another scripture, you know what it says? Jesus turned to them and he says, your actions don't match your words. Yeah, so what were those Pharisees and Sadducees? Unfaithful. But getting back to the story of the two sons, one son said when the father asked him to go to the fields and work, he said no, but later went to the fields and worked. The other one said yes, but then he didn't go to work, right? He was sleeping. You see, their actions didn't match their words, right? But let me tell you, we can learn from this parable about these two sons because what keeps you from going into the harvest fields and working and telling people about Jesus? Because that's what Jesus said. He said, go into the harvest fields, go into your world and be the light and be the salt and tell people about Jesus. What keeps you from doing that? Are you lazy? Do you want to sleep like that one did? Or are you too busy? Too busy on your device to read your Bible? 
<clears throat> you spend hours and hours on your device or hours and hours watching TV. And then you don't even read your Bible, which only takes, according to Allie, maybe 15 minutes, right? Isn't that what you said? 15 minutes to read the scriptures, answer the questions. See, what is that? That's twisted. That's wicked. That's unfaithful. When things like that happen, that's unfaithful. When you make those choices, you are letting distractions, you're letting the flesh rob you of the blessings of God. Because the more you do what God tells you to do, the more you're going to be blessed. Obedience brings blessings. So we always want to do what God says. We have to make a decision. I am not going to be distracted. I am not going to be distracted. You know, statistics show, and I think I told you this before, that adults and kids and teenagers spend eight hours a day on their device. Eight hours a day. Well, you know, you shouldn't have one. If it distracts you that much, that's a distraction. And what the devil wants to do to you guys who come to church, who hear the word, who know what they're supposed to do and don't do it, he wants to keep you from doing what you hear here that you're supposed to do. He wants to take a bunch of faithful kids and make them unfaithful. He wants to take a bunch of kids who are on fire for God and twist them up. And how does he do that? Oh, that, you want that new game? Your friends will tell you, get that new game. Play that new game. You see? So you're tempted to do that because your friends are doing that. But see, you're not like your friends. Do you understand that? You're different. You're unique. God has called you. He's got a calling on your life to be the light and be the salt wherever you go. And you can, you can do that and say, I'm going to do what God tells me to do. Or you can say, oh, just this one time, just this one time, I'll cheat. Or just this one time, I'll lie. Or just this one time, I'll disobey. And what does that lead to? More and more and more lying, cheating, being disobedient. See, the enemy is so sneaky. He wants you to mess up on the little things. He wants you to be unfaithful on the little things. Oh, just this one time. Because he knows what the Bible says. If you're faithful over the little things, you'll be ruler over much. Which do you want to be? Do you want to be faithful? Do you want to be unjust or unfaithful? Or you want to be like this candy cane, which is twisted, which is really unfaithful? We don't want to be like this candy cane. Good to eat, but not to be. We want to be solid Christians. That people can go, Noah is a Christian. Noah is a Christian. And even though they make fun of you for going to church, even though they make fun of you for reading your Bible, even though they make fun of you for reading your daily devotion, even though they make fun of you, listen, you're not to please them. You're to please him. And that's what you always need to think about. I'm going to do what he says. I don't care what they say. You know, and it's not just for kids. It's for teenagers. People make fun of them for not going along with the crowd. Right, Logan? For not, not going to the, the parties and drinking and doing all kinds of nasty stuff. Yeah. Oh, so you're one of them. You don't go. And adults, too. You're one of them. You're one of them. Oh, you're one of them. And you say, yes. Guilty. I am one of them, and I'm proud of it because I'm a child of God, and I'm doing what God tells me to do. 
Thank you for listening, and we can't wait to see you in church again soon. Invite your friends because Choose Life Kids is the place to be.